Good day, people. I am Pipster, and this is Dark Souls 2. Let's jump into it straight away. Just want to note, straight off the bat, this music here reminds me so much of Devil May Cry 1, and I don't know why. It's just got that same vibe to it. Anyways, I've not done a video for a while, and I'm pretty rusty. And I thought, I've been putting off doing Dark Souls 2 for a long time. And, uh, the DLC is out on Tuesday, or well, the last D uh, of the Old Crowns DLC is out on Tuesday, so um, why not why not start a uh, playthrough now and get to all the DLCs at the end, or whenever I get to them in the playthrough. It'll be pretty fun. You know, we'll just start a new game. You've seen it, maybe in a dream, a murky, forgotten land. A place where souls may mend your ailing mind. You will lose everything once branded. The symbol of the curse. An augur of dark. Your past, your future, your very light. None will have meaning, and you won't even care. By then, you'll be something other than human. A thing that feeds on souls, a hollow. Long ago, in a walled-off land far to the north, a great king built a great kingdom. I believe they called it Drang Lake. Perhaps you're familiar. No, how could you be? But one day, stand before its decrepit gate without really knowing why. drawn to a flame. Your wings will burn in anguish. Time after time. For that is your fate. The fate of the cursed.
I haven't watched that cutscene in, well, pretty much since uh, the game came out, and I forgot just how really good it is. However, um, I really, I do wish that you were able to go to those places in the cutscene. I feel like that should have been, like, the tutorial, unlike things betwixt. Um, like, it would have just been so awesome to, like, cinematic to actually go and see the, uh, who is, we, I think we know to be the, the fourth firekeeper, and we're gonna meet the other three in just a, just a moment. But, um, like, just to play through that, and it would have been our journey to, um, Drain Lake, rather than just starting here. Anyway, there's a couple of items in this first area, which is things betwixt. Which is uh, sort of a place outside of time and reality, I like to think it is. Because that's definitely the vibe it gives off. Because it doesn't appear to be actually connected to Drang Lake. Um, which is obviously the main area of the game as you heard about in the cutscene. And um, we'll be going into that hut in just a moment. But down here is a little path. Come and get uh, some smooth, small, smooth and silky stones, which uh, potentially could lead us to some valuable loot. It's definitely uh, a bit of potluck. Another interesting thing about that uh, that cutscene, or about this starting area, we're definitely a dude right now. But um, it, the character creation comes after this area. Which is so odd. Like, I don't understand the design choice of not making your character before you start the game. Because, I don't know. It's, it's a bit silly, in my opinion. Anyways. Because we can now go in here, have a little cutscene, and uh, choose our character. So we're going to do that. What is your name? A name? Well, um... I have not really thought of a name. So, uh... What should we call our character? Hmm... See, I always have a problem with naming characters in any kind of RPG. It's definitely not one of my strong suits. Um, Freddy. Um, Freddy. Freddy something. Cannon arms. Oh, I can't call him Freddy Cannon Arms. That's a shame. <laughs> hmm, I've got an idea. It might make this playthrough interesting. Expo arm. Yes. There we go. I'm gonna call him Freddy Expo Arm. Or Freddy Crossbow Arm. Psst. Uh, 
well. Here's your reward. A sharing. It's a human effigy. Take a closer look. Who do you think it's supposed to be? so sure about that but um sure right classes warrior knight swordsman bandit cleric sorcerer deprived and explorer did i say that i did whatever um is, is there one that starts with a bow there is bandit yeah they sort of uh, the classes aren't as cool as they were in Dark Souls 1, in my opinion, but that's uh, that's definitely a matter of opinion. Um, Explorer's pretty pimp. He, he starts with some fairly cool gears, lots of uh, trinkets for you to mess around with. Obviously, Sorcerer starts with a spell, Cleric starts with uh, a miracle. And only one piece of armor. Bandit starts with actually quite a lot of stuff, and it's also it's a pretty good class if you're planning to go dex. Uh, probably the best class if you're planning on a dex build. Swordsman has two weapons uh, to show off dual wielding, but doesn't actually have the stats to use those weapons as a dual wield. I'm not even sure if you can use a scimitar and a longsword together with dual wielding. Um, so it's pretty, I don't know, it's not very good. It's also got like pretty poor starting stats. I mean, like it's got high decks, but look at its other stats. Like, what, what is this array? It's just, it's poor. Um, Knight is yeah, pretty good. Pretty standard if you're going for like, uh, just quality build, doing a bit of everything. Warrior is definitely your strength class in my opinion. Uh, others might just say go for Knight, but I think Warrior is pretty decent. Because it gives you just enough decks with 11 decks to wield a lot of um, like great swords. I, I think I'm right, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right with that. Deprived, level 1, 6 and everything. Um, yeah, it's pretty much Deprived. As opposed to Deprived in Dark Souls 1, where you got a club and a wooden plank shield, you literally get nothing on the Deprived, which is pretty cool. And also your stats are, like, sixes, so it reduces the amount of weapons you can use by a lot. And yeah, so that's the, that's the classes. Um, probably gonna go Bandit, because crossbow arms, yeah. Probably gonna be using some decks. Uh, Gift. Um, life ring, you'll get that pretty early in the game. Uh, human effigy, you only get one, and it's not really worth it. Healing wares, pretty good if you're starting out, maybe. Um, home with bone, well, it's a home with bone, uh, but you don't need that at all, because you get plenty in the game just playing it, and then at one point you get an infinite home with bone. So, I mean, Seed of the Tree of Giants, um, definitely an interesting gift. This is the gift I took when I first played the game uh, when it came out, uh, not knowing what it did, so I thought, hey, it might be interesting. What it, what it does is, uh, when you get invaded, usually the invader is ignored by mobs, but if you use a seed of the tree of giants, the mobs will attack the invader, and it causes some, for some hilarious trolling. But you can also use it on the NPC invasions, which is pretty useful in uh, at least a few of the DLCs. Uh, I say a few of the DLCs, there's only been two so far. Um, but yeah, so that's an interesting bonfire aesthetic. Probably what I'm gonna choose. Um, it puts an area of the game into New Game Plus, which respawns um, all the items, uh, apart from items and metal chests, because they don't respawn in from the bonfire aesthetics. It respawns the boss, and yeah, it puts it into New Game Plus effectively. Uh, petrified something is like the small, smooth and silky stone, 
um, that we picked up just not well not too long ago, probably about ten minutes ago by now. <laughs> um, but it's the top tier of those items, and will guarantee it guarantees you like one of the better items from uh, the trading system in the game with the crows, which anyone who's played a Souls game before will know uh, about the crows and their trading. Um, so I'm just going to take one fire aesthetic. I'm going to customize my character and then I will be back because this is boring and takes a while so yeah I'll be back in a second. Okay so right we have our character. Uh, body is pretty cool because you get a choice between ripped and not ripped so you always pick ripped. Um, this is the character Pretty much ever since I found out how to do the Mike Tyson tattoo, I've been doing the Mike Tyson tattoo on every character almost, because look at it, it's just it's amazing. Um, I would have done a little bit more, but it's basically the base uh, model, but the first time I tried to change all the settings, it I don't know, there's this weird bug with uh, character creation where it, uh, sometimes it'll just like act like there's a vacuum on the inside of the character's face and just suck everything in and it makes it incredibly difficult to get it back to a normal looking face which is very unfortunate so I mean I had a pretty good thing going my first attempt and then it happened and I was like well this is just annoying and he looked like a complete moron and I was like I can't have that right so um what a nice creation bandit with a bonfire aesthetic yes People come here for the same reason, to break the curse. You're no different, I should think. Hmm, doesn't stand a chance. Wisdom, you never know. to the gate. But remember, hold on to your souls. They're all that keep you from going higher. Oh, I'll fool you no longer. You lose your souls. And we finally get into the game and we get given all these items because pre-order DLC that I didn't actually um, pre-order. Funny. Um, I'm running for some reason. Oh, auto runs on. Um, what is the button for that? One second, let me just find out what the button to turn auto run off is. Um, auto run. Run auto dash X. Right. X. There we go. Now you won't be automatically running. Like, why is that an option? I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna rob these uh, old, old hags of their human effigy. <laughs> also, want to point out if you can remember back to when we first came into the house, um, their caretaker came down from here with a tray of drinks and stuff. I'm just like, what? Where? In these pots? There's nothing but dust in these pots. Where did you get the drinks from, woman? Where? Where? I, I, it's it's a mystery to me. I don't have the shrug emote. Well, you don't start with shrug. That's that's crazy. Anyway, so uh, these are the fire keepers, um, the old fire keepers. Um, what they're doing here? Why they're not keeping the fires anymore? I don't know. Um, it's uh, something to take this tin hat off because it is very stupid. Um, yeah, why they're here and not tending the fires, man, I'm not sure. What? Uh, the person in the intro cutscene was the fourth firekeeper, that's the old woman 
they reference, um, to my believing. Um, yeah, I don't know really what's uh, going on here. I'm not not a law guy so much. And yeah, we're going back into the intro area because there is an area we didn't go to. And I'm also going to switch up my weapon because really, the hands down, the best weapon at the start of the game is the mace. And this is basically a mace that you get from the DLC. Um, like it, it does so much damage compared to everything else. And I can wield it in two hands, and I've gone the wrong way. I'm an idiot. These little guys, they won't attack you unless you attack them. I believe they're called kobolds, but that's just uh, not really an official name. Officially, they don't really have a name, but the, the guys who did the guide uh, decided they would call them kobolds for the sake of them having a name. Now this is our first real enemy of the game, and a lot of people die to him. It is uh, an ogre. Yeah, we're gonna... Oh, you don't want to get caught by that. Or that. Did the uppercut twice, that's very odd. Yeah, you want to try and get behind him. Because once you're behind him, he will do his butt stomp attack. And once you've got him doing his butt stomp attack, it makes it a lot easier to kill him. Just don't get caught. See, look. If I had taken two swings there, I'd have died. Aced him. No damage. Oh, yeah. The stone ring. Stone ring. Pretty cool. Pretty cool ring. Um, there we go. It, uh, you can read the law there if you want. Um, it adds a flat 20 um, to your poise damage stat of a weapon. So it works pretty well with fast weapons or makes big weapons like have that extra punch. Not that you really need it in PvP because poise like doesn't exist. Um, at all in PvP anymore. It's like entirely relevant. Like, you can be wearing the heaviest armor you want and you'll get poise broken in a one attack, maybe two. Okay, there's a Soul of Lost and Dead and a torch there. Torches are pretty cool. They're just a mechanic to light up the game, but you really don't need to light up the game because they intended for the lighting engine to be a lot better than it was and, um, it just ended up with the game being very light. This is the tutorial area. Um, there's not a huge amount to do here. I will go into, I think it's this one and the third one. Um, the second one doesn't really matter. There is some loot in uh, these areas that you might want to pick up. And since I'm going to try and do as much as I can, there's a guy here. Watch out for him. He's a bit of a dick. This guy, like, won't turn around. He's the backstab tutorial. Pretty cool. Ah, down there you can see uh, there is another one of those ogres standing next to a suspicious look. Suspicious? Suspicious? That's not even a word. A suspicious looking coffin. Um, that is the gender change coffin. Which is, um, yeah, if you want to change your gender, get in that coffin. It's kind of ridiculous, really. Not entirely sure why it exists, but... That guy didn't die. Wow. You man. Right. So we're going to carry on. I don't think we're going to bother going to that coffin. Like, there's an ogre there, and another ogre there that's hiding. It's fairly difficult early on in the game, and... Oh. Killing them doesn't really get you anything. Apart from, you can get the Handmaiden's Ladle, which is like a troll weapon. doesn't do anything, it's kind of pointless. Um, but, uh, like, that's it. it. Gives you a couple, that's like 3,000 early souls, but you don't need them. Alright, we're gonna go over here, and... 
and there we go. So yeah, the trading crows. Um, they're straight away here. We are going to give them our leave. Do not discard. Leave. Our thing. And unlike in Demon Souls and Dark Souls, you don't actually have to reload your game for the trade. You just gotta pick it up. We got a faint stone. Um, I think that's the. I can't remember which upgrade that's for. Magic. Well, that's pretty cool, I guess. Um, almost entirely useless. That's just a soul in that body, but I'm so incredibly bad at getting it, I'm just not even gonna risk it. Uh, this is also the one we want. Well, we're not gonna bother going in there because that just takes us to where the ogres are. Really, there's nothing to. Uh, the area is pretty lame, I'm not going to lie. It's a bit of a waste of time. And this video is already getting a bit long. So we're going to make our way to the hub. Right here. So yeah, this is uh, Majula. And it's pretty cool. It's the hub area. You can get to most places in the game from here. Uh, where is it? There, here. You want to drop down in this little gap between the rocks because there is in fact some loot. And you want to drop down here. And there's some loot. A morning star and a cleric sheet. Sacred chime. Morning star, if you don't have the DLC, pretty strong weapon. It's a mace but with the bleed effect. Bleed's not as good in this game. There was the binoculars as well. Not particularly useful, but because they removed bono boosting, which is lame, which uh, made you go supersonic. But anyway, the morning stars there. It's I would recommend it as a, a good starting weapon because it's similar to the mace in that it's a crushing weapon, like it does crushing type damage, and enemies just seem to be weak to that early on in the game. So that's what that's my that's what I've noticed. Anyway, bonfire here like that. Lady down there. Before we go and talk to her, we're just going to run to the other side of Medulla. This area is pretty big, pretty desolate right now. There's not much, not much happening. Huh. Jump that. Don't have to jump that. Now you see there is a rock. Yeah. And, uh, yeah you can actually see loot down there. Now, what would happen if I were to just punch that? This would come up and we'll get an Estus Blast Shard. Useful. Definitely useful. And you'll see why in just a moment. Once we go and talk to the Emerald Herald. What's up, girl? Are you the next mark? Or merely a pawn of fate. Bearer of the curse. I will remain by your side till this frail hope shattered. Take this with you. May it ease your journey. And she gives us Estus Flask times one. Go on and see the king. He who made Dranleg what it once was. He who peered at the essence of the soul. King Vendrick. Okay, so unlike uh, Dark Souls are more like Demon Souls, we have to come to the Emerald Herald in order to spend our souls to level up. A change that, for lore reasons, like, makes some sense, but for gameplay reasons, really a pain in the ass. Like, uh, in Dark Souls, you could just level off at any bonfire at any time you wanted. It was fine, but instead you have to come here. And the main problem with that is Bearer of the curse, seek misery. For misery will lead you to greater, stronger souls. You will never meet the king with a soul so frail and pallid. Is this? Seek those whose names are unutterable. The four endowed with immense souls. 
Their souls will serve as weapons. Once you have found them, return here to me. So that hope will not fade away. And this. Is that a shard you found? Here, let me see it. So that I may help you. To see light. To see hope. However faint it might be. And so on. She talks an awful lot. And when you get to the point where there is like no more significant lore to be learned from her, she will start repeating the same lines over and over again. And there's about three or four lines of dialogue before you can even get to this menu. You can skip through it, but the game doesn't like doing that. <laughs> I'm even on the PC version and it's a little bit better, but like if you're on PS3 or Xbox, I feel sorry for you because that was like the worst because it would take like 30 seconds just to get to the menu to up, uh, level up and upgrade your Essence Flask. We're going to do that with the shard we found, which uh, strengthens our Essence Flask, which um, doesn't do what you think. Strengthening your Essence Flask in uh, Dark Souls 1 would um, mean that you got more healing, it became an Essence Flask plus one. In this, it gives you another charge of Estus Flask, which is important considering when the Emerald Herald gives you the uh, Estus Flask, you only get one charge. So here you can see we have two charges of Estus Flask now, which makes the early game a little bit trickier when you're starting to play the game, but it ends up meaning that you get up to 12 at all times, whereas in Dark Souls, unless you kindle, you wouldn't get 10. You would only get five, so I mean, eh, it balances out, but. Seek souls, seek the king, lest this land swallow you whole, as it has so many others. So, yeah, that's the dialogue I was talking about. We'll get that every time we talk to her. Very annoying. Level up. Um, what do we want to level up? Jeez, I'm not even sure. I get a strength uh, to make it ten. I'll get a vigor. I won't get a vigor because I don't have enough souls. Strength to get it ten. That's good. I mean, don't really necessarily need it right now for this weapon. Because, I mean, we can two hand it. Um, yeah. And we got a bow, of course. The bow works much like any other. Um, apart from you don't have to change your quiver now, you can either shoot with a strong or light attack depending on what arrows you have in what slot slots, I mean that's nice. Um, so yeah, I think we're going to leave it there for this episode, it's coming pretty long and I'm not entirely sure how well this recording is turning out because I'm seeing some like stuttering on my preview, but that might just be the preview, so I'm going to leave it here, see how that's going and hopefully it's all good. Um, I'm sorry if the quality's a bit crap this episode, I've still got to... Obviously, as I said, I haven't recorded for a long time, so... Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.